By now you should be ready to start your campaign, but what kind of campaign are you going to run? Well, only you can decide. Hello my fellow GMs, DMs, creators, narrators, storytellers, and otherworldly purveyors of amazing and wonderful things and strange new worlds, non-copyright, and all kinds of things that uh, we do in our hobby. My name is Guy and today we are talking about the different types of campaign styles that you can have. Now I've spoken about this before on the channel many times and so today's video is really just a refresher, a brusher up on the different type of campaign styles and the strengths and weaknesses that we can expect expect to see from each one of those. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there are five types of campaign styles, and we need to make sure that we understand which each one of those has in terms of an offering and which one is going to suit us the best. Now, I would always advocate that if you are starting out as a new GM, if you haven't yet run anything, don't start off with a giant campaign. Start off with a couple one-shots. Get used to the idea of running adventures first. Don't be tempted to try and create Lord of the Rings before you've even written The Hobbit. We need to understand the basic processes first. So let's jump straight into it. The first type of campaign that there is is the epic campaign. Yes, the epic campaign, my personal favorite type of campaign, is without doubt my favorite. I mean, it's my favorite. It just really is my favorite. The epic campaign takes the idea that the player characters are going to be struggling against some kind of big bad who is going to be trying to do something or achieve thumb, something, something throughout the course of the campaign. So the adventures, some adventures will link to the main story, some adventures won't link to the main story. It's all just going to be a giant journey that eventually will culminate in the players triumphing or not against the nemesis. So it's this big grand thing. Now the strength of that of course it's this big story. There is a motivation for the player characters to come together to drive forward to actually get to this outcome. That's also one of its weaknesses, though, is that the players, if they drop out, when they add in a new character, there isn't so much of a feeling of being part of the big journey anymore. They might not be as invested in overcoming this big villain that they haven't really been fighting previously. So there are a lot of issues that you will need to take into consideration. Now, in terms of prepping for an epic campaign, you obviously need to have a giant master plan that your nemesis is going to be following through, whether it is Dr. Evil trying to take over the world by destroying the moon, or whether it is the Emperor trying to take over a galaxy, or maybe it's just a dragon trying to take over a small kingdom. Whatever it is, you have to have worked out their basic plan before you can even start playing. The next type of campaign is the open campaign. This is monster of the week kind of stuff where it might not be per week. It depends on how often you play and how long your sessions are. But this is where the players are going to be encountering smaller villains. They might still feel like epic battles and all that kind of wonderful stuff. But each villain is self-contained. There isn't a bigger, longer story at play here. The players have no sense that, oh, well, in about six months' time, we should be fighting against the big bad evil. They are constantly fighting against smaller evils and triumphing and winning and moving forward and doing that sort of thing. The strength, of course, is that the players are free to go wherever they want. There is no giant campaign that they have to keep track of and that they have to sort of follow along and try and figure out what's going on. The other strength is that if players drop out or if players come in, they haven't lost anything. They haven't missed parts of the plot. They are as invested as anybody else. The weakness, of course, is that there might not be a sense of purpose. There might not be a sense of direction as to where this campaign is going because their players haven't got a bigger picture. They are just finding little pictures as they go through. So that is one of the weaknesses. Now, what do you have to prep for an open campaign? Well, you have to prep the current adventure and that's it. You don't don't really have to worry about other kind of stuff going on well because it's a literally we do the adventure we move on and we move forward the third type of campaign is almost the antithesis of the epic campaign. It is the player campaign. This is where the players are the ones who are actually driving the story. The players have got goals for their characters and they're going to try and realize those goals. So you as the GM are not coming up with a big bad or with a villain of the week. You are looking at it going, well, their goal is to achieve this. How do I get them to achieve that but make them work for it? So you're kind of reverse engineering 
engineering going, well, that's the outcome that the players are after. I need to make sure that I'm allowing them to get there, but still providing obstacles for them. So the players drive the campaign. The strength, of course, is that the players are absolutely invested in the game. They really want to succeed because it's their own goal. They've created it. They're not just stum stumbling across a plot. The weakness of the campaign, though, is that the players might get bored of their goal and go, you know, we did want to really open up this little tavern selling magical items on the side. We've kind of got that, and it's not as exciting as we had thought it was going to be. Or we've got the giant castle, and we don't know where to go. We have a starship. We're not sure what our next move should be because the GM is waiting for them to make the decisions because it's a player-based campaign. So what you have to do when you are creating a player-based campaign is make sure that your players are very much aware that this is all about them. It's about their characters. They have to drive it. So if you have players who are quite passive and who don't necessarily want to drive a story but want to be part of a story, then the player-based campaign is probably not for them. We then get the simulationist kind of game. And this is a game that really is all about predetermined stuff that the players then encounter. It's as close to an MMO or as a computer game as you're going to get. The GM has worked out beforehand the entire world space, all of the adventures and all of the plots and things that are going on in that world space. And the players then arrive and start to participate in those predetermined events. It's basically like running a module, I suppose, in so far as everything has been pre-created. The strength, of course, is that there is GM neutrality. The GM is not making calls based on the player's actions. The GM is simply following through what has already been planned land. There is no GM favoritism. If you go into an area where the monsters are simply high level because that was what was planned, it's not the GM being vindictive or mean. It's simply your characters going into the wrong location. The weakness is that it can feel as if the players really have no impact. They have no real kind of say in how the world's going to change or grow because, well, the world has already been created and the adventures have already been created. So there is a very limited amount of flexibility. Now, you can overcome that by obviously adding in new adventures as the party goes along. But again, it's all about working to a predefined framework, making sure that that simulation remains true to itself. So obviously, when you are setting up a simulationist campaign, you do have to prepare the most in terms of having your entire area mapped out plus all of the NPCs plus all of the monsters balanced for specific levels or, or power abilities or whatever system you're using you have to have all of that in place before you start playing otherwise you're really just playing an open campaign or an epic campaign. The final type of campaign is the accidental campaign. And this is literally a campaign where you started by running a one-shot, you started by running a single adventure, and the players were like, this was cool, I really liked the characters, I think I want to play some more. And then you play another adventure with the same characters in the same setting in the same world, and another, and another, and suddenly you discover that you've either got an open campaign, or, as you've been playing, you've been adding in some little bits of information about a potential bigger story, and the bigger story is that you're now running an epic campaign. So epi um, accidental campaigns, they really just start out as just being some adventures and then they grow from there. There's nothing really to plan for because while well, you're just planning on running a one shot, uh, once that has happened though, once you realize that you are actually in a campaign, it's very good to then understand that you are and then to choose the type of campaign that you want to go with so that you know and have a structure which is going to allow you to move forward. And the structures, of course, we've spoken about. Anyway, those are my thoughts. A massive thank you. A massive thank you to this week's sponsor. Uh, you saw them popping up on the side of the screen. What do you think about that, by the way? Is that something that uh, still gets you interested in what's being shown, but is not too invasive or intrusive? We're trying out different things on the channel to basically keep you happy, keep the sponsors happy, and keep the lights on. Um, so let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, um, that's it from me for this week. So all that remains is to say thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end a massive thank you to all of our wonderful patrons especially to our honored heroes and uh, until next week i wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming <laughs>